All right. Hello, everybody. It's me, Daniel D., with the Crazy Comedy, Humor, and Satire Podcast. This is episode number 15 for Sunday, October 27th, 2019. How the hell are you? Um, hope you guys are all doing great. It is World Series time, fall classic. Woohoo. I kind of love the way uh, we call it the World Series, even though, to my knowledge, there's only one team that is actually uh, outside of the U.S., and of course, they're not even competing in the World Series. That's the Toronto Blue Jays. Although, the Washington Nationals, from what little I know about uh, baseball, they were once upon a time the Montreal Expos, so now they're the Washington Nationals. Uh, they Anyway, so I guess they sort of have their origins in a foreign country. Um, but yes, the World Series, even though really uh, two countries on a single continent provide all the teams, although I guess if you look at the players, a lot of them are, you know, Latin American, Dominican, Puerto Rican, you know, whatnot. So maybe they get their uh, world part of the World Series that way. But it is kind of funny because, you know, you have the World Cup, which, you know, all these nations across the world compete in, and then you got the World Series. It's like, you know, why why stop at calling it the World Series, you know? Why not, if we're being really full of hubris and just, you know, um, America, you know, the sort of myopic view of the rest of the world, like America is 99% of the globe, and then the rest is like China and the third world and Russia, and that's about it. It's like, why not just call it the Solar System Series or, you know, the, the Galactic Series, the Intergalactic Series, you know, and then the team... Uh, you know, whether it's the Astros or the Nationals, gets to call themselves the champions of the galaxy or the universe. The entire, the best baseball team in the entire universe. You know, after a best of seven series in the United States. Uh, but anyway, it is kind of fun to watch. You know, I forgot, uh, baseball is one of those games that's it's a lot of fun to, when you go in person and are actually at the ballpark. You know, there's really something about the atmosphere there. It's really like truly is a good old American pastime, even though it's kind of been eclipsed by basketball and football. But, you know, there's something about it. I, you know, it's a lot of fun. But uh, watching on TV can be kind of boring, I'm just going to say. You know, it can be, I don't know uh, quite why that is, but it just doesn't, compared to the other sports, like you, I, I feel like it's, maybe this is just me talking as an American, like I can sit there and watch um, football or basketball on TV, and it is kind of, can be fun. You know, baseball, I mean, I'm not saying it's not always fun, but sometimes it does get a little boring on, on the television, but uh, the World Series so far, you know, I've only seen the two games that were in D.C., so, you know, that was kind of, you know, fun to watch baseball again. I haven't done it in a long time. My team, the Cardinals, I guess if I have to say I have a team, uh, then is out thanks to the Nationals. So anyway, um, I'm this one thing I don't understand. People will so the natural thing for me, you know, since I I would say I'm rooting for the Cardinals when they play, but I wouldn't call myself a Cardinals fan because I've gotten in trouble for that before. It's uh, you know, going off on a tangent uh, about that. The when you say you're a fan or you hold yourself out as being a fan of a team, like you wear a shirt that says, let's just say Alabama Crimson Tide, right? Like you wear a shirt that's, you know, or, or you, even if you don't wear the shirt, even if you just say, somebody says, you know, they find out you're from Alabama and they say, oh, are you a Alabama Crimson Tide fan? And you say, yeah, roll tide or whatnot. You know, like to me that when I say I'm a fan of a team, it means as an, as an adult with kids and a career and all that stuff like uh yeah, I, if they're on and I catch the game, I'll root for them. You know, I hope they do well, but if they don't, it's not the end of the world for me. You know, I don't know all the stats. I know a few players' names, and that's kind of it. But um, there's other people, though, that it's like the word fan means fanatic, and you just know everything there is to know about the team and its history going back 100 years. And it's like if you don't, you know, you're you're a fraud or a phony, you know. Um, and I've gotten in trouble that for that, like actually wearing, I went to the University of Memphis and I was wearing a Memphis shirt and uh, I kind of keep up with their basketball team because that's usually where they do well. But, you know, um, somebody, you know, sees me wearing the shirt and is like, oh, you must be happy about the game last night. And I don't know what the hell they're talking about because I didn't see the game. I didn't even know they were playing. I got to ask what sport or I could just lie and kind of bluff, which I do. Uh, 
tend to do that. So I'll say, yeah, oh, I guess it was all right. You know, kind of something uncertain in case they're being sarcastic. Maybe the team didn't do well. I want to cover myself. And anyway, uh, the honest to God truth is, though, I studied philosophy. I did not play on any sports teams. So I really, you know, I hope they do well. But it's like I'm not so invested in the success of their men's basketball or their football team or whatnot. I hope they do well. But anyway, so this time around, my team... Again, I'm not a fan, not a fanatic, but, you know, I'll root for the Cardinals if they're on. They're out. So I guess now I'm rooting for the Nationals, which is kind of a, something you most people don't do. Like, you know, say your team is in the playoffs and another team knocks them out, you know, or, or your rival, you know, beats you, then you will root against your rival, which doesn't make sense to me because, you know, that would make your team look better. Like if your rival, the one that knocked you out, goes on to win the whole thing, well, you're like, well, you know, we, we lost to the champion anyway, so it's like we, you know, nobody else can really say they were better than us except the, the, the championship team, but people will kind of take the opposite approach. Anyway, for me, the Nationals beat the Cardinals, so I'm rooting for the Nationals, although they kind of got obliterated last night. Uh, we'll see how they do tonight, but one thing that was kind of fun about watching that, I didn't realize this was a thing now, this whole Baby Shark theme song, you know, that the Nationals have, have done and their, their fans will all do. It's kind of funny. I've got three kids, uh, the youngest is four, and I've avoided so far getting that song stuck in my head, which uh, sometimes as a parent, you know, kids' songs tend to be annoying, and it's like those annoying songs that really get just stuck in your head, and you can't, you know, whether it's Door of the Explorer or, you know, um, Sesame Street songs, like, I mean, they just make uh, kids' television songs very catchy, like, I don't remember anything about being five years old, but I remember all those stupid Sesame Street songs. Um, uh, you know, from late seventies, early eighties, I remember all those songs could, you know, anyway, like years later, if they, if they were to be played, I would just be able to sing right along with it. But it's like, uh, anyway, so, so far with that baby shark, I have managed, you know, even though I have a young child, not to get that song stuck in my head. I knew it existed. I'd heard rumors of it, but I had not actually heard the song to the point that it got stuck in my head. That all changed when I watched the Nationals play. And they, you know, they played that song. Yeah, it's kind of fun, kind of funny, you know. See all these people in the stadium doing the shark clap and, you know, the, that song, you know, singing along with it. Baby shark, doo 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 doo, baby. You know, anyway, so I got that song stuck in my head now, thanks to the Nationals and uh, their fans. Anyway, but I hope they do well tonight. I mean, nothing against Houston. You know, they're probably, Houston's probably the better team. Was definitely a deeper bullpen, but I hope the Nationals do well since they beat the Cardinals. At least that way, the Cardinals can say they lost to the world champions of baseball. And for that matter, the galactic champions of baseball. The best team in the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, anyway, so that's what's new with me watching the World Series. And, uh, you know, talking about kids songs. Speaking of kids, I was on my way down here to to record my podcast in my little homemade studio. And I kind of got interrupted. My daughter was like wanting to do my hair, which uh, I know Bill Burr has this thing in one of his specials where he talks about uh, how women get to be gay, you know? And <laughs> so when you have, when you have a daughter, especially a young daughter, you get to be kind of gay or do gay things. Cause uh, it's not that I like having my hair quote done, but it, there's something about like when people uh, like going to the barbershop or I don't know, getting, I get actually get my hair buzzed or now I buzz it myself, but, um, it's like, it's kind of relaxing in a way, having somebody messing with your scalp, you know, like, um, you know, running their fingers through your hair or having, anyway, it's kind of relaxing, like a scalp massage or something like that. So anyway, it's like when she, <laughs> she, she wants to do hair and this is my four year old. And uh, her older brother and sister don't trust her, don't want her to touch their hair. Um, and then my wife is black, and you know how that is. You don't don't touch a black woman's hair. Uh, so what does that leave? That leaves me. You know, she's she's gotta do my hair. So anyway, I was kind of, I guess, like getting a scalp massage. But it's like kids that can just um, interrupt you. And uh, but anyway, that was I guess it's kind of nice. You know, my little four year old daughter's hair salon. So I got to be kind of gay for um, a few minutes. And uh, anyway, all right. So 
Um, what's new this week in the world? Well, apparently Hillary Clinton has uh, announced that the Russians aren't stopping after 2016 with interfering with our elections. And not only did they manage to um, influence the, the election to get Donald Trump uh, elected president, but now they're after the Democrats. And uh, who are they trying to help out? Apparently, they're trying to help out Tulsi Gabbard. And so I uh, actually invited Hillary Clinton onto the podcast this week. It uh, took a lot of wheeling and dealing. Because so far, you know, I, I did earlier, you know, I think in like episode three or something like that, I managed to get the ghost of Ronald Reagan on. But this is the first time that I had somebody, not a sitting president, but a, a first lady, a candidate for the presidency, uh, to come onto the podcast. Um, I was able to um, convince her, negotiate her honorarium or, or speaker's fee or whatnot that she collects for appearing on my podcast down. You know, I know she's used to charging a couple hundred thousand dollars to speak to the bankers, you know, because uh, she's a, a woman of the people. Um, but anyway, I managed to talk her down to $2, which is within my price range, my budget. So anyway, she's on today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the program, uh, Miss or the Honorable Madame Hillary Clinton. So what's up? Uh, I don't know what you call yourself these days. Um, former Secretary of State, almost President, um, First Lady, um, Hillary, Hill Dog, uh, what's going on with you these days, Hillary? The Russians. I'm uh, still kind of upset about 2016. I huh? should have been president, you know. Um, so aside from the Russians, what's new with you? The Russians. You're really focusing a lot on the Russians. I mean, okay. So let's just uh, forget about the Russians for a minute. Uh, looking at the field of Democratic candidates, who do you think is going to eventually get the nomination? The Russians. The Russians are going to get the nomination? I'm talking about the Democrats. You know, like, who among the Democrats is going to get the nomination uh, for president? The Russians. So, okay, uh, I mean, you know, a Russian can't become president according to the Constitution, right? If They were, they have to be born inside the United States. So, um, you know, of the candidates, let's just forget about the Russians and the fact that they may be trying to influence the election. Of the candidates, and I don't know how many there are now, I think there were like 120 to begin with. Now we've whittled the, team, the field down to about 58 or so uh, Democrats. Um, you know, of the Democrats that are still in the race, who do you think is going to win the nomination? The Russians. Okay. Um, so the, the Russians are going to win the Democratic Party nomination this year, as in the Russian people, the Russian government, the Russians in the United States, Russian dressing, like what, what kind of, what are you talking about? Why do you think that the Russians are going to win the nomination for the Democrats? They have a bunch of sites and bots. So they have a bunch of sites and bots. So that's going to give them an edge over all the other candidates. And so the Russians are going to be nominated. Well, like you, you can only be running for president if you're an individual, right? So is there like one Russian that, you know, you're talking about here? I mean, it can't be every Russian or just the Russians collectively. I mean, so you're saying that there is there one particular Russian that you have in mind that is going to win the nomination to run for president as a Democrat? I'm not making any predictions, but I think they've got their eye on somebody who's currently in the Democratic primary. Okay, so the Russians... Um, are going to take control of the Democratic Party nomination pr process, the primaries, and they've got somebody who they're going to run as their candidate. Is that what you're saying? Well, okay. So who do the, do the Russians have that they're planning to run, you know, for the nomination? The Russians. Well, that's what I'm asking you. You're saying the Russians, but then when I ask you, you know, it can't be all the Russians. I mean, they got to have one person. You say they're grooming somebody. Um, and so who is it? Who is it that the Russians want to, you know, run as their candidate for president? The Russians. Okay. So the Russians are going to all run in the Democratic primaries and win. And so then they're going to face President Trump in the general election 
who I guess is also the Russians' Manchurian candidate. Uh, so at the end of the day, who's going to win the election? The Russians. Do you mean the Democratic candidate or President Trump? The Russians. Okay. Do you have anything that you want to talk about besides the Russians? The Russians. All right. Uh, Honorable Madam Secretary Clinton, is there some kind of medication you're supposed to be on? Uh, you seem to be kind of fixated on Russia these days. Uh, you know, is is everything okay? They have a bunch of sites and bots and... So the Russians have a bunch of sites and bots. Okay. So how's the family? How's, um, you know... Chelsea doing these days? Grooming her to be the third party candidate. Who's grooming her to be the third party candidate? You and Bill? The Russians. The Russians are grooming her to be the third party candidate? Are you talking about Chelsea, your daughter? Uh, Who are you talking about? I'm not making any predictions, but I think they've got their eye on somebody who's currently in the Democratic primary. Okay, so now you're not talking about Chelsea, you're talking about somebody in the Democratic primary who you think is a Russian... Uh, agent, Manchurian candidate, what? So, okay. Which one of the candidates are you talking about? You're talking about Elizabeth Warren. You're talking about Tulsi Gabbard. You're talking about Marianne Williamson or whoever that crystal ball reading lady is. I mean, who are you talking about? The Russians. So who is the candidate that they're trying to groom, you know, or, or put forward as their nominee for the Democratic, you know, ticket? Who, who are they trying to get to run? you know, for president against Donald Trump. The Russians. Right. Um, so the, it's the Russians behind it, but who are they pushing to have be the nominee? The Russians. Okay, maybe that's why you were willing to come on my podcast for only $2, because it seems like you kind of lost your mind. Um, any idea where your sanity might be? The Russians. What, the Russians have your sanity? They have a bunch of sites and bots and- And according to you, they also have a candidate that they've selected on the Democrat side to be the nominee, correct? Um, So anyway, uh, thanks for being on, Madam Secretary, eh, Madam Secretary, uh, First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton. Uh, Adios. Maybe get with your doctor and see if your medication needs to be increased. I don't know. Uh, But anyway, best of luck to you and Bill. All right, folks, that was uh, former First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton, who seems to be kind of out of her mind these days. All right, and uh, because uh, we want to comply with, uh, we want to be fair and balanced like our friends over at Fox News, uh, let's have uh, Hillary Clinton's arch nemesis uh, come on. No, I'm not talking about the Russians. I'm talking about Donald J. Trump. All right, uh, so we got him on by uh, long-distance telephone. Uh, Hello, Mr. President. What do you have to say about um, what Hillary Clinton just uh, said? Do you think what she's saying is true? Do the Russians have a candidate that they're trying to run? What do you think about uh, what Hillary Clinton just said? I moved on her like a bitch. What you talking about in uh, 2016 with the help of the Russians? You moved on her like a, quote, bitch? Well, okay, now we know, you know, what you think about Hillary Clinton. I know you've described her as a, quote, nasty woman. Um, what do you think about the other, you know, candidates for um, president on the Democratic side? Do you have a plan? Like, what are you going to do, you know, in the general election this time around? Grab them by the pussy. You're going to grab them all by the pussy? I mean, not all of them have pussies, you know. Uh, not to be prejudiced against trans women and all out there, but, you know... Um, Many of the Democrats are male, the candidates, and so they wouldn't have a vagina. But, uh, you know, so you'd grab the female Democratic candidates by the pussy. What about the male Democratic candidates? What's your plan for dealing with them? Grab them by the pussy. So you haven't really thought this thing through. I mean, uh, you know, during the election, you're just going to go around grabbing them by the pussy, you know. Um, I mean, do you think that's enough to win you the election? What about Elizabeth Warren? I mean, she's got a lot of energy. She's uh, got a lot of momentum in the polls. I mean, what if you face Elizabeth Warren? Or I moved on her like a bitch. What, you already moved on Elizabeth Warren like a bitch? Okay, so what about Kamala Harris? She's a former prosecutor. I mean, you think you'd just be able to do that to her in the debate? I mean, uh, what kind of rapport do you have with uh, Kamala Harris? I moved on her like a bitch. 
And Kamala Harris is a senator of the United States. What do you mean you moved on her like a bitch? Grab by the pussy. All right, good talking to you, President Trump, uh, Donnie boy. Um, so anyway, there you have it. Trump is uh, giving one-word answers, fixated on pussy and moving on people like bitches. Hillary Clinton is fixated on the Russians. And, uh, you know, so 2016, you see why most people didn't vote. Look at the options that we had. Shit and shit. Do you want runny shit or do you want constipated shit? Well, not exactly two good options. So most people uh, voted... Didn't vote, which I think is a mistake. I think if you don't like what's available, you vote third party. And actually, before we start thinking about third parties, and I think some of these other candidates, uh, you know, seriously, folks, I think uh, some of these candidates like uh, Andrew Yang, you know, he's, uh, I've heard him on a few podcasts, Eric Weinstein's The Portal. Uh, He was on Sam Harris's Making Sense and Joe Rogan's podcast. I mean, he puts a really good case forward. And not just about the universal basic income. I know that's like his what seems like a one-trick pony, but he talks about other things, especially on the podcast with Eric Weinstein. He talked about education a little bit, talked about health, um, things like that. I mean, he's worth taking a look at. Uh, Of course, there's um, Tulsi Gabbard, who I really hadn't paid much attention to, but now Hillary Clinton is singling her out as being a Russian agent. Uh, So I've looked at her a little more closely, kind of like a little bit what I see. She's independent-minded. She doesn't just toe the party line. I guess uh, early on, she was an ethnic uh, you know, woman, uh, she's, well, she's a woman and she's, uh, Indian. Um, you know, so that was like, Democrats are all in love with that because they play identity politics. But then when she moved beyond just being the identity, you know, uh, thing and just, um, you know, mindlessly going along with what the Democrats say, but adding some visual diversity to their, you know, pictures and their image, you know, when she actually started speaking her mind and adding maybe a little bit of intellectual or, or, policy diversity like with foreign policy uh they didn't like her so much but anyway so she may be worth looking at but right now there's maybe a couple of folks in the democratic side that are worth looking at bernie sanders could be legit too uh he at least as i said before says fuck the banks which i agree with fuck the banks you know those fuckers uh everybody else was you know has barely seen their uh income and assets increase in value since 2008 but the bankers have really um scored big and they haven't produced anything the money is like a variable right like it's it's the x in the equation like x stands in the place of goods and services that the rest of us produce and the banks just produce the x's they don't even produce the x's the federal reserve prints all this money or creates all this money on a computer system and lends it to the banks for next to nothing, and then they lend it out to us at these exorbitant rates and just game the whole system. So Bernie Sanders may have my vote because he says fuck the banks, and he says it pretty convincingly. But then again, Tulsi Gabbard and uh, Andrew Yang, they seem pretty pretty good too. But uh, the bottom line is I hope we don't wind up with two uh, shitty choices again like we did in 2016. But if we do, and I know it's, uh, you know, alarmingly high probability that we will since the political parties are driven by tribalism instead of ideas and principles uh but anyway if we wind up with two shitty candidates again in the general election vote third party don't just stay home that way you know instead of saying uh you know so-and-so won with you know 48 percent of the vote or 50 percent of the vote if somebody manages to do that that hasn't happened in a long time Somebody actually gets a majority of the voters to vote for them. But say it happens, you know. Instead of saying they won with 52% or even 48% of the vote, 49.5, whatever, they'd have to say if everybody who didn't vote because they don't like the options went out, voted third party, or voted a write-in candidate, just write in fucking Mickey Mouse, you know. Write in whoever you want. Colonel Sanders, you know, he, he's got his 11 herbs and spices. He makes pretty good fried chicken, his finger licking good. Who knows? Even though he's dead, maybe he knows how to, uh, you know, be president. I mean, president we have is pretty much brain dead. So, you know, what harm would it would do? But, you know, just write somebody in. Colonel Sanders, Mickey Mouse, whatever. And that way, when the election totals are read off and they say, you know, God forbid President Trump or if it's one of the Democratic candidates, you know, one with... 22% of the vote and the, uh, you know, the other party candidate, one with, uh, you know, had 16% of the vote 
and uh, you know all these other percentages are represented by write-ins. You know, maybe people would get the idea. There's a there's a possibility out there of having a legit third party, you know, or independent candidate. We can only hope. But anyway, thank you very much for tuning in this week to the Crazy Comedy Humor and Satire Podcast. This is again episode number fifteen four. Sunday, October 27th, 2019. Uh, don't forget to visit the website www.crazycomedyhumor.com or email me at danield.crazycomedyhumor at gmail.com. Uh, hasta luego, motherfuckers.